I wanted it to be better than the first, but it's just okay. And that's okay, I guess. Smash that like button, ring the bell for all videos coming soon, for notifications of course. Right off the bat, the biggest problem, the film Shazam Fury of the Gods just feels all over the place and forgettable. The humor largely falls flat outside of a couple of one-off moments, and the action nor visuals are nothing to write home about, though the CGI is consistent. And the villains really lack the depth to feel anything other than copy slash paste. And that last part is unfortunate, since they ignored the OG Captain Marvel's rogues gallery largely, they made new villains, who have fun playing them, but again, just kind of run to the mill. Asher Angel, who plays Billy Batson, is barely in this. His screen time feels more like a cameo and that shocked me. While it's good to see Levi, and I love him to death, I feel the same way I did from the first movie. Zachary Levi is playing a 10 year old in an adult body, not a 17 year old. Asher Angel tried to match it more this time, but it still feels off and not quite as connective as it should because he's barely in the movie. And there is a nice reference to his name, from the 70s show actor. Freddy really is the soul here. His journey, wisecracks, and story all hit home, and he sells it a lot. Again, a, a problematic romance. A minor and a 6,000 year old woman who happens to be looking like a minor, but isn't one story-wise, get together. What is with the DCEU and these weirdly ignored problematic romances looking at you, Wonder Woman 1984? Long stretches feel like not much happens and the character arcs are not at all invested in the wizard goes from point a to point z real quick and shazam's is a weaker than should be case of imposter syndrome that could have been really interesting if given a little bit more time to flesh it out and we've already talked about freddy everyone else is just kind of there i maintain that the shazamily Sorry. Should have been saved for this one. They're background filler heroes and that's about it. Then there's a really ham-fisted modern dayism driven subplot that feels like nothing but an agenda box that had to be checked for sexuality relevancy purposes. Most of these bear no weight on the story at all and it fits into the all the children fit a particular cliche model and that annoys the heck out of me. What are you gonna do with modern dayisms in Hollywood? I will say overall I had fun. The mythological beasts especially were cool and the product placement, if that's what it was, was hilarious. Seeing the expanded lore of Shazam's world is interesting and has the potential to be an expansive addition, especially as it relates to the Greek mythology side of things. But it's not fleshed out enough. I did say to my brother in the screening, where is Kratos when you need him? With the minotaurs and the heartbeats and all, Kratos killed all these before, he can do it again. I thought the third act especially hit its stride and ended up in a stronger place than I anticipated based on the rest of the film. It's just more of a chore than this ought to be, it's missing some of that heart from the first and the conclusions do feel rushed. Fear of the Gods is also entrenched in DCEU lore, from references to other heroes to the ending post credit scenes, which we'll get more into. But there's three big twists in the film, one I saw coming a mile away, one I did not, and it's more of a sudden and unexpected moment, and the last was the coolest Deus Ex Machina ever unfortunately spoiled by the marketing of traders. Remember, I warned about spoilers. Shazam dies, like Billy is dead, and I would have believed it as the film really sells it well if I didn't see the marketing that Wonder Woman shows up. So she does, and revives him with her god powers to the staff and whatnot, cool idea. Her amazing theme plays, which was just fun and wonderful, but it also felt hollow and meaningless, much like the two credit scenes. One is building off of the one from the first movie, teasing a villain team up that won't happen, and the other connecting Shazam to not only the Black Adam movie, but the future with the JSA, Gun Suicide Squad, and Peacemaker with those characters. Most of which are also meaningless because they aren't being continued in the recent, except for gun stuff, of course. His wife is here, so something feels messy and off. It doesn't make sense because things that have been said aren't continuing or being teased for the future, then things that are continuing, those characters are showing up in things that probably aren't continuing. It's a, it's a mess and it's confusing. I'm ready for The Flash to see that reset and get some answers si since it supposedly does reset everything. And yet it's been reported that they said they're cutting that Wonder Woman cameo and Henry Cavill Superman cameo from The Flash so it doesn't tease anything not happening. But that's exactly what they did here, so why not just leave those in then so we can see them one last time? And given the box office so far with Levi and the director Sandberg saying Shazam's future was dependent all on box office, yeah, rip. It's not doing great, which is sad, 
but I think it's one part fatigue. And I think also, why should audiences care when a reset is coming? It's frustrating and it feels like internal sabotage, but it remains to be seen, is that intentional? I, I doubt it. But they had to know it was going to affect the movies coming out this year. And that's unfortunate. I guess Shazam, Fury of the Gods, three out of five stars. I know that sounded more negative, even though I left a positive score. I did have a fun time, but I think the current state of DC and this transition from the DCEU to the DCU is proving to be a lot messier and more frustrating for me than I realized. And that was the final impression the film left on me. So I've been thinking about it a lot is what it is. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe and remember, always look for the good.